Hi, everyone. Um, I hope y'all can hear me and see my screen. Thank you all so much for joining. We're going to get started in just like maybe like half a minute. Um, I'm just loving the energy and the like introductions in the chat. I really hope that this is a dy dynamic experience where y'all feel comfortable sharing, giving shout outs in the chat, collaborating with each other. Um, and really talking back and forth with me. I know I'll be doing a lot of talking in this session, but I do want to know that y'all have questions, y'all are engaged. So just like, you know, let us know how you're feeling, what you're thinking in the chat. Um, and we'll go over some housekeeping rules as this um, the session progresses. But I'm really excited y'all are here. Um, I am getting a notification that my internet connection is stable. So I hope y'all can still hear me um, well. But I hope you're having a wonderful time at this amazing Move On Progressive Power Summit. We're excited you're here. Y'all are the reason I do this work. I'm so privileged and honored to be in front of y'all today and share some of my stories, working with amazing members, and really help you elevate your campaigns and elevate your petitions in ways that are meaningful to you and really grounded in your um, lived experiences and your stories and your expertise. So let's get started. Um, so Petitions 102, how do I get attention? Um, I don't know if some of y'all were able to join the Petitions 101 yesterday. Um, this is sort of building out, off of the scaffolding of that information. I will do a quick run through just to talk about discussed in the Petitions 101 session yesterday. Just really quick run through um, so y'all know what we talked about and you'll have some baseline understanding of why we're talking about this um, and really get y'all attention. So like um, I also want to sort of define what attention in this context means. Um, and attention is really momentum. It is engaging the right audiences. It is engaging the right people to build momentum for success. Um, excitement, enthusiasm, engagement, and um, wins towards your campaigns and the demands that you've laid out in your petitions. So let's get started. Um, I believe we're going to go over some housekeeping rules quickly. I love the energy in the chat. Please keep it up. Um, okay, so I don't know if y'all have seen this already. We did talk about, a little bit about it yesterday, but I do want to reiterate just some housekeeping rules and our community agreements so we can feel grounded when we're going through this session. So come as you are. Um, if that means that you don't want to engage in the chat, totally appropriate. If that means that you're, you know, sipping on your tea or wearing your pajamas, feel free to do so. Um, we are here to meet you as you are, and I hope that you will also meet me as I am. Oh, hi, Gabby. Nice to see you in this session. Um, also, we want you to trust your lived experiences. Um, you know, people can have accolades, people can have grad school degrees or bachelor degrees, but like what really informs so much of how we see the world and show up in the world is our lived experience. And we want to be grounded in that, both in terms of how we show up today in our campaigning overall. And we'll sort of dive into what that means a little bit in terms of your petitions and your campaigns going forward. Um, we also want you to know yourself. So you, if you're not excited, um, if you don't feel fully engaged in the session, that's okay. Come as you are, know yourself, know your boundaries. We know that there's a lot of information that y'all are getting at this summit. And so please respect, trust, and um, breathe through your boundaries as best as you can. Um, make space, take space. So um, a lot of ha us live at the intersections of various identities, and we are incentivized to show up based on those identities in certain ways. So if that means that you're more comfortable taking up more space, think about taking a step back a little bit. Um, and also, if you are not comfortable taking space, lean into taking up more space and really showing up in your true authentic self. One diva, one mic. Um, I am the diva during the most of the session, but I also welcome y'all to ask questions um, during the Q&A and otherwise during the session because I do want y'all to be interacting with me and talking to me. So those are some of our community agreements. We are going to have some parameters of how to use the chat, share topics and personal experiences related to the, your community, um, related to the session and share campaigns that you've worked on in the past, share things about yourself, share your identities with us as best as you can, share campaigns or projects that relate to the session. I know some of y'all already petition starters. Matthew, I see you um, have already started petitions and this is an opportunity for you to level those petitions up and really be grounded in your experiences and yourself. Um, and then connect with other attendees here. All of y'all are experts. All of y'all are 
aware of things and are open, understand things about the world that the other doesn't. And so share those with us as best as you can. And then ask me questions. Like, I'm going to keep saying that. Please ask me questions. I welcome them. Um, and also sometimes I'm going to use language that maybe you're not getting, you don't have the full context of. So ask me to clarify as it comes up. Please don't use the chat to promote your organization or your business. Um, sh do not share external links. Those would have to be vetted through our team. Do not share information that is not relevant to the session or the content and do not send the same message repeatedly. I'm sure you've seen this, um, but please respect this space as best as you can. So now that we've done some housekeeping stuff, let's get into it. So I'm going to do a quick overview of who I am. I am the platform director here at Move On as of two days ago. Actually, I was a platform campaign director before that. A lot of my experience prior to working at Move On, where I've been for three and a half years, is electorally focused. Um, and I also did work in the reproductive justice space, voting rights space, um, and do some racial, racial justice work as well. I live in Houston. I live in Chicago. I don't live in Houston anymore, but I live in Chicago. Um, I'm loving it here. It's wonderful. But the truth is, I'm a Texan at heart. It's a big part of who I am. I've been told that I have an accent sometimes and it crops up randomly. Um, and a lot of the reproductive justice or organizing that I've done and advocacy that I've done um, has been based in Texas. So I have a lot of ties there and a lot of feelings about what um, a lot of advocates for abortion access are experiencing in Texas right now. I am, I live at the cross section of a lot of identities myself. I'm Pakistani. I am an immigrant. Um, I am a Muslim woman and I'm very used to living in a political environment that does not necessarily accept or embrace a lot of the identities that are so formative to me and that I hold. So that's a little bit about me. If you're open or willing, feel free to drop in the chat your name, your pronouns, where you're based, and any other identities that you ascribe to and that you're bringing into this session and this space and also your campaigning. Feel free to drop it in. I'd love to give some shout outs as well. Okay, so I have a question for y'all. Um, what do you think is the best way to get attention for your campaign, for your petition campaign or any campaign overall? What is the best way to get attention or build momentum or sustain momentum as we're defining it today? Anyone? Thoughts? Ideas? The title may give away some of it. So yes, media is definitely one of the great ways to do it. Um, we go to the GOP now on everyone's lips. Yeah, being quippy, being, being word of mouth, that's a great way. Social media, these are all great um, audiences and folks to reach out to. In which medium it can be honestly any medium um that's sort of what i'm trying to get at today well we got some right answers we got some other answers i'm going to talk to you about this in depth today and i really want y'all to focus on the three main areas that i think excellent answers everyone truly and the three main areas that i think will really help sustain build and keep momentum and attention on your campaign okay so what are we going to cover? We're going to talk about the best way to get attention. We're going to talk some real life examples of tactics. I'm going to share some stories of effective tactics that we've used in the past to sustain and keep momentum for a campaign. And then we're going to do some integrating this into your own campaign and some practice time, um, sharing out some of what resonated with you um, in the chat and talking it through. Um, and then we're going to do a Q&A, which I hope I, you have some really great questions, and I hope I have some illuminating answers, but I can't guarantee. Um, I'm also learning just as y'all are. So let's do a quick reminder of what the platform is. Our Move On Petitions platform is um, it's an open tool that is open to everyone. M member organizations, partner organizations, members like you, um, per can post campaigns on progressive issues that can run from anything, whether it's a ballot initiative or in a mud district that's extremely local to advocating for abortion access on a state level or voting rights on a state level to a national demand um, for defunding the police or um, fighting for climate jobs and care jobs and deep 
investment in our infrastructure like we're doing right now with a reconciliation bill in the House and the Senate. So this is a place where you can speak in your own voice about the issues that you care about. And I think the main thing to take away is that it's in your voice. This is content you're producing. These are demands that you're producing and you're able to post it on our platform. We work with Move On staff. We work with member, incredible members like you. And I really wanna highlight, y'all are the reason that I feel motivated and inspired to keep doing this work. Y'all are brilliant. Y'all understand your communities in a way that I aspire to. And so I want you to remember and hold on to that as you're thinking through your campaigns. We work with an incredible community support volunteers that help moderate, um, handle, and troubleshoot any issues that we may run into on the, um, on the platform. Bear in mind, we are an open platform, so we get a lot of petitions that we may not necessarily be aligned with. And our community support volunteers handle that, sit through that, and support us as we navigate this big tech tool that we have. And we also work with partner organizations. So if you're a part of a local organization, a state organization, we can partner with you and help support and build off of your campaign. Um, it's not small. I mean, I can't make it larger at the moment, unfortunately, but I hope what I'm sharing, I'm sharing a lot of what's off of this um, PowerPoint. So I hope that helps out in terms of understanding and you know, walking through. I'm sorry that it's not small, um, not bigger. Um, we are an important way to show power in important campaigns to the media and decision makers. And that's something that we'll get through and we'll talk through a lot through this session. And then we're here to support you. So our team is here, our platform team, me, others on this team are here to support you and build out your campaign and build and sustain momentum. So some of this might be, you know, a repeat of yesterday, but I just want us to be grounded in some of the facts. Um, and again, these are big takeaways from yesterday. The things that we focused on was what are the primary things you need in order to get the signatures and get people to sign your petition? You want a simple and clear ask. It gains the most traction. And I'll give you some examples of how that works. You want to talk about demands that you have a personal, authentic stake in. And that, again, is the power of the platform. It is a place to story tell about you and your experiences. You are an expert in the area in which you live. You are an expert of the cross identities that you inhabit. And you are an expert in the issues that directly impact you. And you want to be grounded in that. You want to have a clear decision maker. And today we're going to talk about how to talk to these decision makers and engage them. You want to have something that's timely in terms of national or state or local news or has a clear timeline. Things that do well and get a lot of momentum and attention and signatures are things that are timely or have a clear timeline in terms of we're making these demands right now because there's a shareholders meeting happening in two weeks. And then you also don't necessarily need to have a million signatures to run an effective campaign, but you want to have a clear petition signature goal that will be resonant and relevant to the decision makers that you're appealing to. So the, again, I'm going through this very quickly because these are top lines from yesterday. So now let's build off of this. How does your story and campaign get attention and make an impact? Those are the questions that we're going to be grappling through with today um, and, and think through. So you have the signers now, and now we're focusing on putting pressure and creating the story of your campaign. And it is time to focus on three main audiences. So a lot of y'all talked about social media, um, you talked about media, et cetera. These are all parts of this story of your campaign and a way to build, sustain attention and momentum to the campaign in order to put decision makers and make an impact. So I'm trying to create this through line for all of y'all. And the focus is going to be on decision makers, the ways in which we can effectively engage them, and then also engaging your signers. The signers of your petition are people that are already invested in the issue. They've already taken action. And now, so how do we continue and sustain them in taking action for a campaign and build power on the demands that you've laid out? And then we're gonna talk about how to engage the media. The media is a powerful tool to share out your story and your story of your campaign and the amount of people that you have working towards your demands. Okay. So what this is what's so interesting about these three audiences, all three of them sort of feed into each other. When you engage one, it helps you engage the other and it helps you engage the third. And then that creates this beautiful, virtuous cycle of attention, momentum, and an arc for your campaign. Um, 
I know y'all are troubleshooting how to more effectively zoom in. I'm so sorry that the language and the, the text is not bigger, but I really appreciate folks jumping in and trying to help um, Lynn out here. Um, so what you'll see here is a sort of feedback loop, right? When you engage your signers and you get people to sign your petition, share out your petition and take additional action, that gets the attention of the media. And the media helps you engage with the decision makers and lets decision makers know that they need to start taking you and your demands very, very seriously. Um, so for example, when you engage your signers in your actions with follow with in tactics for follow up actions, that builds the attention on social media, on different platforms for the media to actually start doing paying attention. Hey, this is actually generating some attention and people are taking action on this. How do we share the story of this campaign out? And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then that gains the attention of decision makers. And there's very concrete tactical things that you can do with each of these, which I will enumerate for you, um, that you can do to engage these three primary audiences. But I want you to think of these three audiences as your primary folks to mobilize as you're running your campaign and thinking through next steps for your petition. And I also want to add, I know that the language, I mean, the text is a little bit small. So I would love if Lynn and others, if you would like to follow up with me, I can share this with you. I can share the actual PowerPoint with you. And there also should be a recording um, that we'll be able to disseminate if that might be helpful going forward. Again, apologies on my end. Okay, so let's talk about the media first. Pitch, the first things that you can do in order to share the story of your campaign is stay grounded in why you started this campaign. This means being grounded in the story of your personal experience with the campaign. It means being grounded in your values. So it may not be that this directly impacts you, but it's grounded in the values that you hope to see in the world. And I'll give you an example of how I was asked to do that in terms of running my own campaign as a move on member or a move on staffer. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what it means to stay grounded. So yesterday we talked about the personal stake that you have in a campaign or a petition, whether it's your personal lived experience or the values, that is what makes your campaign and your story compelling and interesting to a lot of the media that will want to report on your particular campaign. The next thing you want to do is you want to draft a press release and this press release can feature comments that you get from your petition because signers are able to post comments on their your petition so pulling some of those out that are most compelling that speak to the campaign story that you're trying to create and then also your personal story as well as including the number of signatures that are in, that are this is the number of signatures that you have on your petition. Then also being grounded in the fact that you are an expert in your campaign. All of y'all are leaders in your communities as well as move on leaders yourselves. And so trusting that you understand your campaign better than anyone else. The press is going to ask you questions. The press is going to try and you know make sense of this campaign. You are the expert. So be grounded in that. If you're running a local campaign, um, I'll use an example that a, an attendee shared yesterday about mental health services for students and your desire is to push for more money um, and, your talk, and your decision maker here is the student, is the superintendent, you can share, you are going to be an expert in why you started this campaign and why it's important in the first place to your community. So that is going to be what's grounding you, especially when you're talking about a local issue make personal pitches to individual reporters. This is something that we do at Move On, right? So we'll do some research about people that have reported on the issue, um, whether it's local, state, or national, and we'll get their contact information, whether it's an email. Oftentimes you'll find that on their Twitter bios um, for pitches, or you can actually DM them on Twitter themselves and reach out to them with your draft press release as well as your personal story and let them know where you can be contacted. This is a great opportunity to share your story and also make it very personal and build and sustain those relationships with the reporters. Um, I know I'm going through a lot of this very quickly. Thank you, Matthew. Let's all take a deep breath. Um, and then also remember that you don't necessarily need to do this by yourself. 
you can reach out to us. If you have a decent amount of signatures, if you've hit your signature goal, you can confer with us and figure out who are the reporters that I should be reaching out to and can move on actually do some of that outreach ourselves as well. So that's your, that is sharing your initial story of your campaign. And I'll give you some examples of how that's worked out for us in the past. Okay, so there's various points in which you are able to get attention from the media in your campaign. Let's talk about the initial phase. Here you'll see more than 330,000 people signed petition to rename Trump's Tower Street after Barack Obama. So this is a petition that came about, I believe in 2019. And it was an interesting petition because people were able to troll Trump in this interesting, funny way. And the petition starter um, really helped this go more broadly. I think we got over like 300,000 signatures on it. And we also did a really interesting, um, funny uh, rally in front of the Trump Tower in New York. Without doing a ton of our own pitching on this, because this was doing so well on social media, we the CBS News picked it up, shared out that it was a move on petition, interviewed Elizabeth, who was a starter for the petition, where she was able to talk about why she started this petition in the first place. So this actual press hit came before we did any additional tactics. It was just specifically about the petition itself. So again, think about your audience, think about who you wanna engage, reach out to signers to share the petition out um, and get it out on social media. Reporters are paying attention to that as well as reaching out to them individually. Then we also have an example here of um, where our Move On staff worked with Tamara Rice's mom, um, Samira Rice, and I think this was in 2017 or 2018, and we did a petition delivery. So that's another tactic that we use that actually encouraged and sustained more attention where the media showed up for a petition delivery where decision makers were present. It happened in front of the police union and we delivered 170,000 signatures and Samira Rice ended up sharing the story of why she thought that Timothy, the police officer that murdered her son should actually continue to be fired and not be rehired by the police union. And so is this interesting arc of us delivering the demands of 170,000 people, Tamir Rice's mom sharing her personal story and us engaging the decision makers and also the media showing up at the petition delivery and giving more attention and sustaining momentum for the petition itself and the campaign itself. So that's one example. Then we have another example of Centoya Brown. Um, so we ran a petition that garnered over 600,000 signatures and we worked with her legal team and delivered those signatures as well. And after we used that as a way to sustain, keep in, members engaged and get people to take additional action on this. And eventually Centoya Brown was released from prison and so that's another example of a press hit that came after the impact was already felt, right? We got press hits early in the initial phase. We also got it with a petition delivery, but that also helped us sustain momentum and keep attention on the issue and on Centoya Brown's unjust imprisonment um, for over a year and a half. And then of course we have the Let Shakari Run petition. This petition was one that I actually started as a move on staff. I was interviewed by a local radio station um, in Louisiana where I talked about my relationship and my values and why I chose to start this petition in the first place. Um, and we actually ended up pitching this very small like radio station. I shared my story about why this felt really personally meaningful for me. And again, this did not necessarily this was not a personal experience, but it was grounded in my values. And that was the story that I shared, my values of racial justice, of um, believing and supporting Black women, and also my love for sports. And excitedly, uh, we got a press hit in ESPN. I'm a big sports fan. I don't know if there's any other sports fans out there. So this felt really exciting on a personal level. Um, we got a press hit for our nearly 600,000 signature petition for letting Shakari run in the Olympics um, this July.
So these are powerful media hits. And I hope this is illustrating for you the various points at which you can get media. There's the very initial phase where um, I'm an Astros fan, Matthew, but I can still support you as a person. <laughs> um, but there's, there's various points where you're able to get press media hits, the initial signature count, the petition delivery, the impact, and then also all the way in between. And so I want you to keep thinking about how you can get momentum, use the press to sustain and build momentum for your campaign. So let's talk about decision makers. So decision makers are the people that hold the power to enact the change that you're demanding. And that is the best way to conceptualize it. Coordinating a petition delivery is such a great way to share the story of your campaign. And we talked a little bit about it in the beginning. And so I really want to underscore and highlight that. There's two different ways of doing a petition delivery. Um, in the time of COVID, we had to get creative and we started coordinating a digital petition delivery. In a digital petition delivery, one example of this was we had um, about aggregate 2 million signatures demanding student debt relief during um, COVID. And student debt crisis reached out to Senator Elizabeth Warren asking if she would accept the signatures that they had accumulated through those multiple petitions. She said yes, and she did a video where she shared out her accepting those signatures and she posted it on multiple social media platforms. And then Student Debt Crisis shared out with their signers that they had sent their demands and the signatures to the decision maker. So the main point of a petition delivery is to engage the decision maker in creative, compelling ways where you can share the story of your campaign more broadly. Now, if you're going to do it in person, which I think we might be able to more so now than we were before, if you're feeling safe, um, you want a strong creative element or a strong visual to gain media and press. Um, something that makes your demands very, very clear, and I'll give you examples of what that looks like. You want to reach out to the decision makers themselves, whether it's a phone call, whether it's an email, asking them to give a statement or accept the signatures as well. So you're taking the language of your signers, you're taking the signatures of your signers and using them to make demands and show power and solidarity to decision makers. Again, building the arc and the story of your campaign. You wanna also invite petition signers to get motivated and engaged in the campaign by inviting them to the petition delivery if they can or take digital action to support your campaign. You, have an, you wanna have an agenda or a run of show where you're sharing your story, where you have an expert in place, and you also are making a show of handing the signatures to the decision makers as well. Again, I'll give you examples of that in, um, in the preceding slide. And then you also wanna reach out to local organizations. Remember, we're building a coalition here. So you want them to attend the delivery and build more hype and invite some of their membership to the petition delivery as well. Remember, we're getting attention, we're using our audiences and we're building and making clear the arc of our campaign. So let's talk about some compelling um, and powerful petition deliveries that we've done in the past. Um, so in, I think it was like 2018, we, or 2019, we aggregated across the entire movement, I think, believe almost 10 million signatures to demand the impeachment of Donald Trump. We decided to go to the Capitol Hill steps we got Representative Al Green, who was one of the first con um, congressional members to call for the impeachment of Donald Trump. <coughs> we also made sure to make a visual out of it. So you can see Trump must go was the tagline. We also included our, um, sorry, let me drink some water. Our logo to make sure that our members were represented. And we delivered those signatures and we got a ton of press there, right? Again. Think about all that, that circle of the virtuous circle of attention that we're building here. And we also invited petition signers to join to the event to build hype in person, to get the media engaged, and also to get decision makers the demands. We also, um, during the World Women's World Cup, I don't remember which year it was, um, there was a lot of conversation about pay parity between um, male soccer athletes and women soccer athletes and how you know, the 
women are winning the World Cup and the men are barely getting through the qualifying rounds um, and how there's this discrepancy overall in terms of pay parity. So here in Chicago, we went to the US soccer headquarters and that's again, we wanna get in front of the decision makers. We want to make sure that we are where the decision makers are centralized. We delivered the signatures with Ultraviolet, who was a partner organization that started the petition. Um, and we had people speak about why they started that petition in the first place with clear visuals, with those boxes um, of signatures of folks. And we also had a ton of press there covering the actual petition delivery as well. And then we also sent out a report back to signers to let them know that we were handing their demands to the people that are making decisions here. And then, of course, the Let Shakari Run petition. So this was an interesting one. And this is also like a cross section of a lot of what I talked about in the last slide. So in order to make this creative, since Shakari herself is a track star, we decided to coordinate a run in, in front of the US um, anti-doping agency in Colorado Springs, Colorado, where a lot of Olympic um, sort of training is done. It's one of the biggest Olympic training facility, facilities in the country. We reached out to the decision makers there, um, them being the US anti-doping agency. We got the director of communications to come out and speak. We worked with local um, track um, teams and track orgs to come run. Um, and they did, they ran two miles to in front of the US ADA, where there were a bunch of visuals set up with this very clear banner where the media also met them. Um, and the US ADA gave an, a very clear, um, they accepted the signatures and they also gave a statement to the press. And we also reached out to a local organization called Normal, which does work on marijuana legalization specifically in the state of Colorado. And so it was a perfect combination of all of the things that I mentioned. Um, and we did get a bunch of press and we also asked folks and signers to both attend this. And if they weren't local to Colorado Springs, we asked them to take digital action, which was a click to tweet, um, tweeting out how many signatures we've gotten on the petition, as well as tagging the International um, Olympic Committee, as well as the US uh, anti-doping agency. So it was a way to engage all of the audiences that I've mentioned, the press, the decision makers, and the petition signers. And again, it helped us gain a ton of momentum because now the International Olympic Committee is reconsidering their decisions about um, and their ruling on marijuana usage with um, Olympic athletes. I hope that was a an example that sort of brought the full circle of what we're talking about very clearly and specifically to all of y'all. Um, and then, of course, there's the petition signers. These are people that have already taken action. They want to take more action. They're excited about your campaign. They're excited about the demands. Um, and it's our job to keep them engaged as campaigners and leaders in our um, for this campaign. So you want to keep them continuously engaged and aware of all of the steps of the campaign that you've taken. So like I said, click, send out click to tweet actions with graphics and a hashtag. So we have a back end on our platform where starters of petitions and partner organizations can email out the signers for people to take additional action. One example of when we did this is um, with the Shakari petition, as well as the demanding a climate segment for the presidential debates last year with Earth Uprising, which is a climate justice youth led organization. We created a hashtag with our demands and we sent it out with a visual and an image. People, all they had to do was click and it tweeted automatically. And those tweets, if you went to the hashtag, you would see hundreds and hundreds of tweets populating um, that Twitter hashtag. And it was so wonderful to see. And you also want to have the tags of the decision makers on it. So in that case, we did the DNC. We did the, um, I think it was ABC and CBS broadcast networks. And ultimately our demands were met. You also want to ask signers to share the petition out more widely. These people have already taken the initial action. They want to take more action. They want to support your demands. And we're here to help you craft the share the petition language. Um, if you're interested in sending an email for that, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter. You also want to send out an email asking signers to call in to these decision makers. I shared an example last, um, last session yesterday about Julia Roachman, who started a petition demanding that Trump's um, live COVID-19 briefings be ended. 
she got the individual um, phone numbers and email addresses for reporters and producers at ABS, CBS, and CNN. And she got her 300,000 signers to call into these actual producers and reporters and inundate their phones. And so they could feel the pressure that this was actually not serving the people that they were reporting to serve. Um, so it's about getting in front of the decision makers. And ultimately, these news media networks, they ended up taking down the Trump live COVID briefings um, overall. Then you want to coordinate a petition delivery, like we said, and invite those signers. And then very, very importantly, signers want to know that their signature is doing something in the world. So the best thing that you can do is send a report back with images of a petition delivery or additional actions to your signers. If you've won the campaign, you want them to know that and you share that out with an email or a text message or a social media tweet um, to let them know that the campaign has won. And that will actually encourage them to take more action on campaigns that you're running and that you're interested in. Okay, so we've talked about these three very clear audiences that are going to help sustain, bring and maintain attention and momentum to your campaigns. It is this virtuous cycle of attention and it is also building the arc for your campaign. So the main thing that I want you to take away from this is that you have three audiences to engage and how to think through engaging those audiences. So now we're gonna do some silent writing um, and by silent writing, I mean, you can share it in the chat. Um, what is the story for a campaign that you're interested in running or a campaign that you've already worked on? If you're not there yet, what are some creative ta visual tactics that you've enjoyed seeing both in this presentation and otherwise out in the world that you felt really compelled by? Um, and also, practically speaking, how can you engage your three audiences, the media, the decision makers, the signers, and consider them in the arc of your campaign? I've shared some of the best practices that I've seen and noticed over the course of my work on the platform, but that in no way means that any of this is comprehensive. And I know that y'all are incredibly creative. Y'all are organizers of your own and understand pieces of this that I may not. So I want you to share some of that and some of your expertise in the chat. I'm going to go silent for um, maybe like three or four minutes for folks to, sh um, oh, is my video feed down? Hmm, I hope not. Um, can folks hear me? Okay, great. Okay, y'all can hear me. Great. Um, I want you to share in the, I will be silent for maybe three or four minutes. If y'all can share some of your, what your story for your campaign, some creative ways in which you've seen people engage some of these audiences and how you would like to engage these three audiences in the future, please drop it in the chat and we'll come back around 141 my time. So we'll come back at the 42 hour. 42 minute mark.
And if at any point, if you're inspired, um, feel free to drop some of your ideas or what you've seen in the chat. And I would love to read what y'all are thinking. I'm very inspired by y'all right now. Um, and this is what also what I'm speaking to of like trusting your own brilliance. So like Matthew and his creative tactic of creating like a picture of the Star Trek Discovery cast and equating it to the ideals of Starfleet. Um, and it's speaking to an audience that Matthew is going to understand more than most. And I love that. Brian, even your like framing of like the GOP as mobsters um, if I'm understanding this correctly, like is very compelling and actually an interesting angle and visual that you could use in order to um, carry out your campaign. And then Samantha, um, I think there's so many ways that you can talk about that. And it, the visuals don't even necessarily have to be about vi like pictures, but it's like a, a compelling a compelling line or even with the Let Shakari run, like, it was, it was short, it was quippy, and it let the demand be known. And so there's ways we can brainstorm about what that would be. Um, a lot of the signage that we see is oftentimes words. So it doesn't even have to be images necessarily. Um, a petition starting that would require cities to clean up litter in city of Rand waterways, that's huge. Um, and I love that. Talking about attention to the state of Missouri's foster care system um, and reaching state legislators, yeah. Again, this is that is so compellingly because it's about being grounded in your state, your knowledge of the state in a way that other people may not be able to engage with or understand. Um, and yeah, there's so much like I love what Matthew said. There's so much compassion from y'all in thinking through some of these campaign ideas. Um, John, try a different angle for your story instead of calling it what it is. Yes, consult at the source for possible wording for ideas. Absolutely, bright, big words. Absolutely. Um, um, environmental issues. Yes, definitely getting larger organizations involved to provide some um, sustenance and some, some support, um, as well as working with those local chapters. These folks want to engage with you. Y'all are the experts in your area and your issue. Um, and then yeah, like I really appreciate what y'all are sharing. And again, this is what Matthew said. It's coming from a well of compassion and a well of understanding where your values are and where your story intersects, as well as thinking through the audiences that you're trying to engage. Um, cool. Okay. So if anyone else, if anyone else has any ideas or thoughts, feel free to drop them in the chat. 
But the next thing we're going to do is if you have questions for me, um, I hope I have answers for you. This is a collaborative space where I'm learning just as much as I am sharing. So if you have questions, feel free to share them out. I know that there's one already. Um, and what that question is, in my area, most press and elected officials are adversarial to our work. What would you suggest to seek reporters, others who are supportive? I think that's a great question. Um, if most press and elected officials are adversarial to your work, it's about, then I think focusing less on the media piece of it and focusing more on the local organizing piece of it is probably um, a big piece of that. So getting and building and sustaining more momentum and engaging more people um, in order to make it such that the press cannot ignore your demands for very long. Um, whether they're going to report about it adversarially or not, they're still going to have to feel compelled and a compulsion to report about it. So thinking through that audience piece, I think, is a really important part here. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any questions or thoughts or insights they want to share? Well, if you don't, I just want to say thank you so much for engaging, for being an active participant of this session. I'm really excited to see what y'all post on our platform. You can post at sign.moveon.org. That is where our petitions platform lives. Um, you can also reach out to me directly at ispa.raja at moveon.org. I will let you know um, I am going to be out for two weeks. So, you know, to some of my colleagues in my away message. Um, I am taking a much needed vacation. Um, as we all should, we all need to rest and take some times for ourselves. Um, but I really appreciate everything y'all have shared. Um, Lori, you're talking about starting a petition and Sierra Club getting involved. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to work with you on that. Feel free to reach out to me and my email. Um, and yeah, I can definitely share out a petition that lives on our platform right now. This is the Let You Carry Run petition that we ran. Um, here is one petition. And then here is women's. Let me get, okay, here we go. And here is another petition um, with ultraviolet that we did. Um, while the SB8 and the abortion bans were taking place or are, were, are being enacted in Texas. And again, these are bigger petitions, but your petitions don't have to have 100,000, 10,000 signatures to be successful. It's about being strategic and using your audiences to put pressure and sustain and continue momentum. Um, thank you all so much. Um, I am going to stop sharing my screen and be full screen for y'all as I say goodbye. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your summit. Um, and I'm just so grateful for your brilliance and for being able to share this space with y'all. And we will stay in touch, hopefully. Bye, y'all.